actor's daughter played a role in one of the Poirot episodes. And who writes shockingly dark crime thrillers with a lesbian killer as the main lead after the end of the series? And can we expect a new Poirot feature anytime soon? Keep watching to find out David Suchet's answer to that very question. Hi, I'm Peter, and here's everything you're dying to know about the cast of Poirot. Hugh Frazier as Captain Arthur Hastings. Not too bright, quite naive, but still chivalrous and sincere. Hastings definitely captured our hearts. I say. Oh, sorry. Hugh Frazier loved playing this character alongside David Suchet, although Hugh admitted that he was stunned by his co-star's high standard of preparation right from the very first scene. He recalled that everything was ready for filming, but Suchet kept saying, just a second, just a second. He went over to a bookcase in the background and arranged all the books at exactly 90 degrees with exactly the same space between each book. That level of dedication to the character simply amazed Frasier and made a great impact on his own acting throughout the years. In fact, Frasier fell in love with the series and was inspired to become a bit of a detective himself. That's right, since Poirot ended, Hugh has written three rather grisly crime thrillers. His main character is a lesbian contract killer, Rena Walker, peppered with flashbacks to her brutal upbringing as a teenager in Notting Hill. Frasier half jokes that he thinks that Agatha Christie was less of an influence on him as an author than the prospect of being unemployed after Poirot. And while it's unfortunate that we've been seeing a lot less of Frasier lately, we can still enjoy listening to his voice. Hugh has narrated many audiobooks of Agatha Christie's novels, so if you uh, ever get bored with re-watching the series, you can always spend a pleasant evening in listening to Hugh Frasier's calming tones. Oh, well, you know. Much like in Agatha Christie's Poirot, in real life, Hugh Frasier is pretty successful when it comes to drawing attention from the ladies. Over 30 years ago, he captured the heart of his co-star from the series The Bretts. And after their characters married on screen, Hugh and his beloved Linda Land exchange vows in real life too. And it seems like Frasier really knows how to charm a lady, as Belinda grew up with parents who had a very volatile relationship, which resulted in her having very little faith in marriage. But Hugh totally changed her opinion on matrimony. Belinda revealed that in Hugh, she found what she had always needed, but never found before, stability and joy. Together, they have raised a wonderful daughter, Lily. And it seems that after so many years together, the couple still have a spark of passion and romance, more than any of them would ever expect it. Belinda shared, Hugh's got everything that keeps me interested. He's very bright and extremely funny, which is a big thing for me. Yes, absolutely. Philip Jackson as Chief Inspector James Jap. What a drag it is getting old, Mick Jagger once sang. And that's exactly what Philip Jackson thinks. A lot of people become quite boring as they get older. I'm really trying not to do that. If anything, I'd quite like to get more frivolous and irresponsible before fading away. Yeah, that's how excited Jackson is about his current life. You could say that he loves to spend his time as frivolously as his character, Jap. And just like James, Philip isn't fond of planning things too much when there's a chance to make a spontaneous decision. Unlike Hugh Frazier, Jackson wasn't quite charmed by David Suchet's acting methods. I mean, he respected him, of course, but he tried to stick to his own style of performance. David Suchet is a very meticulous actor. He works everything down to the last detail. I, on the other hand, am rather sloppy as an actor. I tend not to plan ahead too much. I always know my lines, but I don't like to plan a performance too carefully because I enjoy responding to what's going on around me on the day of filming. Sounds a lot like Jap, doesn't it? What's more, Jackson didn't do any research about his character beforehand. And I think you'd probably agree, Jackson handled the job quite well. Can't I have just one little murder case to myself? These days, Jackson happily shares his life with Sally, his wife of more than three decades, and has settled for a fairly mundane existence as, without Jap's moustache, Jackson isn't usually recognised by fans. Looking to the future, Philip says that he likes to keep his options open. He doesn't really want to be known or typecast for his part on Poirot, but he's grateful for his role as the Chief Inspector and how it's made him more well-known. Pauline Moran as Miss Felicity Lemon. The only person Mr. Poirot is willing to trust, well, more than his little grey cells, is his loyal secretary, the charming Miss Lemon. Unlike Inspector Jap, Moran paid quite a lot of attention to how the Queen of Detective novels described the character in her books. In fact, such was her attention to the books that poor Pauline was scared that she wouldn't get the role. She has wiry hair and a pince nez and is very, very exacting. I certainly don't fit that description, Moran confessed. 
Fortunately, the showrunners had a very different point of view on the subject, and so the world got its most charming Miss Lemon to date. And although little is known about the actress, we do know that just like her character, she also has an interest in the occult. While Miss Lemon is more excited about tarot cards and Ouija boards, in real life, Pauline is into astrology. And it seems that Moran is seriously professional when it comes to observing the heavens, as she runs a company called Astrum, which offers individual reports based on the date and time of a client's birth. One thing's for sure, her on-screen boss, Monsieur Poirot, would definitely disapprove of that. All in all, Pauline loved her character. She revealed that the most fun she had was with this quite peculiar but now pretty iconic row of curls on her forehead. While the producers didn't really like them, Moran loved to keep them in her cupboard and stick them on whenever possible. <laughs> David Suchet as Hercule Poirot. While fans are sure that there's no one who could portray the Belgian detective better than David Suchet, it actually took the actor quite a while to decide whether the role was even worth trying for or not. Not only had Suchet not read any of the Agatha Christie books, but his brother John also warned him off the role, saying that David didn't even slightly resemble Hercule Poirot. But Suchet took a risk and ended up loving the role for almost 25 years. Hercule Poirot touched David's life so much that many of the character's personal qualities became a part of the actor himself. There is a moment when I'm not truly sure who I am. Am I an actor? who has played the role of Poirot for a quarter of a century in 70 television films? Or have I actually become this little man that the world, and I, love so much? Where do I stop? And where does he begin? David Suchet revealed when the series ended. Such a strong connection probably comes from David's great dedication to the role. Suchet remained in character even between takes, and he was actually extremely strict about any direction that came from the showrunners. I mean, nothing silly like refusing to eat boiled eggs that weren't exactly the same size as each other, but there are some pretty obsessive stories about him refusing to wear outfits that, in his opinion, didn't suit the character. When it comes to fighting for a role in the way that I want to play it, I'm afraid I'm not that easy, David admitted. I have never liked directors telling me how to play a role, ever. Aside from that, Suchet says that there are only a few similarities between Poirot and himself, things like punctuality and a satisfaction with things being in order. Just like fans of the series, David Suchet is still grieving the end of Poirot's investigations. The actor even wrote a book called Poirot and Me, which gives an insight into his life on and off screen. Suchet's views on religion, a look into his family life, and of course, more about our beloved little Belgian. David's memoir reveals the gentle relationship between him and his wife, actress Sheila Ferris. Suchet never gets tired of saying that he wouldn't have had such a successful career without Sheila's unwavering support. David admits that he fell in love with Sheila as soon as he saw her during rehearsals at the theatre, but it did take him quite a while to take her on a date. Fortunately, Sheila gave David a chance and hasn't regretted it even once during their blissful 44 years together. They've raised two children, Catherine, who is currently a successful physiotherapist, and Robert, who is a personal fitness trainer. And Robert has actually gotten his parents to take up the habit of meditating every single day. I meditate with my wife most mornings. It's a wonderful start to the day, to start calm with an empty slate, Suchet has said. More so, together with Sheila, the couple go on some crazy adventures. A couple of years ago, they hiked a very tough trail to Machu Picchu. Though that said, on other days, the couple loves to just enjoy each other's company, watching Poirot themselves with a glass of wine, just like the fans. David is still very emotional when he thinks of that iconic role. Just look at how he almost shed a tear when recalling the moment Agatha Christie's daughter herself told him that her mother would be proud to see how Suchet portrayed her character. In the very same interview, David revealed that he would be more than happy to do a Poirot movie. <laughs> it would oh, be. It would, it would be, be but you'd do it if you were asked. I'd do the movie. Would you? Well, I wouldn't do another television. Yeah. But I'd do the movie. I'd love to do that. So, there's a solid chance that fans could be watching David Suchet solving mysteries with his little grey cells one more time. Zoe Wanamaker as Ariadne Oliver. This eccentric and colourful crime writer brought us plenty of laughs. Zoe is well known for making any character iconic and memorable, from the quirky Quidditch teacher Rolanda Hooch in the Harry Potter films, to the hilarious control freak Susan Harper in long-running BBC sitcom My Family. And Wanamaker herself is just as energetic and fascinating as her characters. 
actually for a long period of time, so he was sure that, in her words, she would be a singleton for life. But then, as the actress herself puts it, she got lucky and eventually got married at the age of 45. It was during a very tough time in her life, as Wanamaker was grieving over the recent loss of her father, legendary actor Sam Wanamaker. And Zoe found someone who really understood what she was going through, as actor and writer Gorn Grainer was also dealing with a great loss in his life when cancer took his wife. Gorn and Zoe supported each other and made it through those dark times and together managed to write a new chapter in their lives. After marriage, Wanamaker became stepmother to Grainer's two children, Charlie and Eliza, whom she describes as fantastically generous and loving, great people. Words which could well describe Zoe herself. David Yelland as George. And how could we forget about Poirot's calm and collected valet? David Yelland is a real veteran of British theatre, and that's why you don't often see him on screen. But his stage performances are still connected to the world of Agatha Christie. His theatrical work in the production of Witness for the Prosecution is a great example. And coincidentally, his daughter Hannah is also connected to Agatha Christie. You can spot Hannah Yelland in one of the episodes of Agatha Christie's Poirot, where Lord Edgware dies. Hannah played the role of Geraldine Marsh, and I'm sure we can all remember her performance. Meanwhile, Father David lives a very private life, and as a result, very little is known about him. Although it seems that his relationship with his daughter Hannah is something that he's not afraid to share. The two are really close and often perform together on stage, such as in the play The Life and Adventures of Nicholas Nickleby. What else would you love to know about the series? Perhaps what the cast was up to before they portrayed those iconic characters? Share your thoughts with us in the comments. And, as always, thanks for staying awesome.